over the edge? Nobody knows. But you need to be informed so you can make an informed decision. Don't have this done in your own mouth. At a seminar in Auckland recently, Dr. Huggins explained how mercury vapour leaches from dental amalgams, attacks the brain and central nervous system, leading to a raft of diseases, psychosis, depression, chronic fatigue, multiple sclerosis, to name a few. Um, there's another one that's doing that. I keep forgetting. Um, oh, Alzheimer's. Uh, <coughs> Alzheimer's is doing Thank you, it took a little while. In one person, it will give you depression. In another person, it gives you chronic fatigue. In another, multiple sclerosis, depending on where your weak link is and when it breaks. But Dr. Huggins, you are saying that mercury poisoning causes almost everything. I know. I felt the same way when I first got involved in this. No, one thing couldn't be creating 100 problems. Well, I found that it, it's not. It's creating 200 problems. But every time you have a nerve going to a different place, you call it a different disease. There's certainly no scientific basis for the claims that he makes. David Symes from the New Zealand Dental Association. When these independent and objective authorities for example, the Environmental Protection Agency in the US have evaluated the evidence. Their conclusion is that amalgam is safe and is not responsible for all of these conditions that Hal Huggins suggests they are. Dental associations worldwide are at loggerheads with the likes of Hal Huggins and the anti-amalgam brigade that follows him. New Zealand is no exception. Here we continue to use amalgam fillings. The current position is that amalgam, in its present form, used correctly, is safe. But how can you prove that it is safe? I don't think the burden is on someone to prove that it's safe. I think the burden is on someone to prove that it is unsafe. Do you put amalgam in children under six and pregnant women? No. 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 Why not if it's safe? Again, safety versus risk. We're not saying that it's safe. We're, ta we're saying that we've got to, on balance, look at the risks. Now, there's certain subpopulations within our community, and they are the young, and they are developing organisms, and they are people with kidney disease that may be more susceptible to the leaching of mercury from amalgam. So, as a responsible profession, we treat these people a little bit differently. So, it does leach? It does, definitely, yes. As well as leaching from our fillings, mercury also occurs naturally in our environment and diet. The contentious issue is how much is too much and what's coming from where. The World Health Organization has said that 80% of mercury retained in our bodies is from amalgam fillings. Just because they're the WHO doesn't mean they have the last say. You know, there's been many studies. That is their position. There are other studies that report a different position. And as I said, it's going to be variable depending on the amount of dental amalgam you have in your mouth and your other habits, such as your diet. Your body has a small ability to get rid of mercury until you have your first amalgam filling placed. Then it loses that ability. Then it accumulates, and at some point in time, it's going to get you. This is uh, a mouthful of amalgam. I think there are something like 16 amalgams here. The presence of root canals. These where you have the spike looking things coming up above. But your first impression looking at this x-ray is what? It's an accident looking for a place to happen. For decades, Hal Huggins has been putting the boot into the dental establishment and for decades they've been putting the boot into him. Why did they take the license from me? Because, number one, I refused to place amalgam, I refused to refer patients to have amalgam placed, I refused to place root canals, and I refused to refer people to have them placed somewhere else, and I wrote a book called It's All in Your Head that they didn't like. In the mid-90s, the Colorado Court of Dental Examiners stripped Hal Huggins of his dental credentials on the grounds of professional misconduct. 
when they take your license and announce it in all the media, this is supposed to make you stop. Some people have had this sort of thing done to them and have had heart attacks and died. Other people shrivel up and go into another business and be quiet. They hoped I would be quiet. That chance of that. For 20 years, Hal Huggins has been traveling the world singing the same tune. He has published a number of books and at age 70 he has no intention of stopping his lifelong mission to get amalgam out of dentistry and out of mouths. The good news is you take him out he might get better. Dr Huggins' close colleague in New Zealand is Tauranga-based Dr Mike Godfrey, a GP who too is convinced that many serious illnesses are caused by amalgam fillings and heavy metals.